you've asked me a very difficult question in regarding there are two ways of addressing your question one is a question could be why have policymakers and economists in general ignored nature and biodiversity in their modeling and the question that you have asked which is the antithesis of that is um, why is nature so important in our economies to answer the latter which is easier is that without nature we will be dead we won't be here we are part of nature everything we do whether we walk or when we walk what we eat whether we talk or sleep it's embedded in nature it's nature's processes so everything we build is built out of nature's ingredients without nature's processes such as for example pollination decomposition soil regeneration um, food production tree growth of trees cleaning of water by natural processes nothing would happen without nature so the human economy is embedded in nature the biosphere and so the idea that ecosystems which su supply all these services that I've just now mentioned, and many more that I haven't mentioned. The idea that they should not be part of the infrastructure on which economics is built is absurd. So nature is extremely important. And what my review does is to use the grammar of economics to include nature in a fundamental way, in production, consumption, distribution. Uh, activities. One of the things I show in the review is the enormous growth of the human economy, global human economy, over the past 70 years since the end of the Second World War. It's never happened before. It was unprecedented growth in prosperity, in the way we think of prosperity, by the way, which is gross income, and also lives have improved. The average person today lives longer than she did in 1950, for example, 72 years ago. From 46 years to 72 years is life expectancy today, globally. Income has grown hugely. We are doing many, many things we didn't do before, we couldn't do before. There's been prosperity. And one reason in the 1950s, when economics, of growth and development were being created, the human economy was small relative to the biosphere. Human economy, of course, locally it was very important biosphere, goes without saying, but I'm saying globally. And trade enabled you to do that. So ignoring nature at that time was not absurd. But today it's different. The human economy is very large relative to the biosphere. So we are creating, having an impact on the biosphere in an unprecedented way. So today we cannot afford to ignore it. I think the move has to come from the citizen. And in fact, my review was targeted at the citizen. I was speaking to the citizen. I was not speaking to government officials in my review. Even the 600 page review, the big review, the, the full review, was addressing young economists and the citizen. And for the citizen, I then created a separate, short, non technical, 100 page abridged version, which is also on, online in the UK Treasury website. So ultimately, it has to be the citizen. And I want to say that I think many citizens throughout the world, in particular, poor people, the poorest people on earth, in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, Latin America, indigenous people, for example, amongst the poorest people on earth, they have been very concerned about their local in environment. Obviously, indigenous people live in forests, for example, or coastal fisheries. And if they start degrading, they observe it, that their capital assets are dwindling, okay? So they have suffered and they experience it. They know that national accounts, if they ever see a national account, 
do not account for nature's degradation. And that co corresponds to their own suffering. So that's not a problem. They have understood it. They've always recognized it. The question is whether urban sophisticates, cosmopolitans who live in the urban areas and are middle class, upper middle class, and or running universities, uh, universities and uh, uh, departments of uh, office uh, uh, of government, have a grammar for dealing with it. And what I was suggesting to you in my previous answer was that economics of growth, development, and economics of poverty, as they developed over since the 1950s, did not have nature in them. And so decision makers in government, including probably yours, they were students 10, 15, 20 years ago, okay? And they learned economics in the universities. And they didn't have nature in it. So what they what they've done is the national models, economic models that governments have, reflect academic economics. Very good understand, very reasonable, very understandable reason. So they don't have the grammar. And even when the citizen says, do something, move away from the policies you have, they don't quite know how to do it because they don't have the grammar for it. What my review tries to do is to construct the grammar and offer it to decision makers and see that, look, economics is not against nature. It's the way we have practiced economics that has gone against nature. And that has been a big mistake. But we can change our direction quite easily with a little bit of work using technical advice from demographers, ecologists, earth scientists, hydrologists, economists, and so forth. Even treasuries. Ministries of Finance should have ecologists in there. Ecologists shouldn't be minor part players in some environmental department. They should be there centrally in government because they know, understand major capital assets. Say if you're in Brazil, you need to understand what the Amazon rainforests do. And the economist needs to understand that.